More pro-Hamas insanity erupting in liberal cities and on left-wing campuses. Anti-Israel agitators out in full force in New York, pelting cops with eggs, bottles, and even fireworks. 19 were arrested in the chaos. College campuses also continue to be a hotbed of anti-Semitism. Pro-Palestinian professors and students taking over the library at NYU while demanding a ceasefire. Kids at Columbia University are handing out Palestinian head wraps and planning a walkout this week. And Harvard's bracing for more protests after students held a die-in protest. Jesus. Liberal comedian Bill Maher blasting the snot-nosed brats for siding with the terrorists. Don't go to an elite college, because as recent events have shown, it just makes you stupid. There are few, if any, positives to come out of what happened in Israel, but one of them is opening America's eyes to how higher education has become indoctrination into a stew of bad ideas, among them the simplistic notion that the world is a binary place where everyone is either an oppressor or oppressed. The same students who will tell you that words are violence and silence is violence were very supportive when Hamas terrorists went on a rape and murder rampage worthy of the Vikings. They knew where to point the fingers at the murdered, and then it was off to ethics class. <laughs> Greg, Bill Maher sounds familiar. <laughs> that is like everything we've said for the past 10 years. I welcome him to this table. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know what? It's, it, it's about time. I mean, imagine being a Jewish kid on these campuses right now. Right. I mean, you can't go there. I mean, you get you have to like basically keep your mouth shut. Staging a die-in after one of the most gruesome massacres in history, they deserve to get their asses kicked, but they won't. I think what we're seeing is the death of what I, I coined ocean privilege. The, we used to have these moats around us, you know, they were a buffer zone and they were only pierced a couple of times, 9-11 and Pearl Harbor and some assorted homegrown Islamic terror like at the Pulse nightclub. But we had this ocean privilege. We never really had to worry. We got complacent. In fact, we allowed our, our ocean privilege to get chipped away and it got chipped away in three ways. One, our border collapse. Now you can get in if you really try and we might even help you. So instead of adding to ocean privilege, we poked a big giant hole in it. Second, you got homegrown radicalism, which you're seeing now in the demonstrations at colleges. We are, whether we knew it or not, we were funding an ideology on campuses that were promoting our demise, probably for the last 30, 40 years. And the process is ongoing. It's a war against the West but it's from within. Then you add to it the contagious brainwash that comes from the social media. We've collapsed the barrier between ideologues and this country. So now you can get that stuff right in your, your own room and it can spread. And, it, and, and, and basically the, the oppressor versus the oppressed virus is now on every campus. You have kids who know nothing but that. Why do you think so many people are obsessed with the Roman Empire? Mm -hmm. Right. It's because something once mighty got complacent, assume, you know, assumed that bread and circuses would keep people happy. That's now carbs and TikTok. And what we're seeing now is that it doesn't. And who knew that if you got rid of patriotism and religion and exceptionalism and the value of the melting pot, it would lead to this. Well, it has. Mm. What would you rather have white privilege or ocean privilege? Oh, boy, that's a tough one. White ocean privilege. I'll answer it for you, Dana Perino. Well, I think what's Terrible. important here is the transparency, and that is, is key. And as, for as hard as it is to watch these videos and to know exactly what happened or to listen to the stories of what happened, it is so important. Barry Weiss at uh, the Free Press is doing a great job of sort of oral uh, testimony to make sure that it is out there, and I would make every one of these kids listen to it. I'd love to give these kids a map that had no names on it yet, and mm. see if they could tell me, where is Israel? Oh, that'd be fun. Right? You, you know exactly how that would mm -hmm. go. The other thing, this weekend, in, Italy, in India, there was a protest of college kids, and they're out there protesting. They're carrying the Italian flag, <laughs> which is also red, white, and green. <laughs> Hello. Like, they didn't even know what they were doing. Um, but the other point I would like to make is that there was a journalist from the, I think it was, New, it was one of the New York, New York or New York magazine, and they tweeted that there had been evidence that Hamas had decapitated a child. We got a ton of social media pushback. So they did a second tweet and said, well, I'm actually not sure if the baby was beheaded or if the baby's head fell off after the trauma. Imagine thinking that you actually have to say that so that the online mob won't come after you. The fact is the baby was killed and it was beheaded. That is, that is the evidence that has come out as hard as it is to hear. And I would make sure all these kids had to hear it. Judge Janine. You know, I wonder if 
they are evil, so evil that they think that the Jews deserve it, or maybe they're not seeing what we're seeing. Maybe they just want to deny that it's existing. And that's why Israel released the unedited video that Trey Yanks talked about that apparently none of the major networks are reporting on. They don't want to talk about how horrific it is to have these babies be beheaded or have eyes gouged out or women burned alive. Um, and, and so all they talk about are the Palestinians, the poor Palestinians. There's no mention of any of the Jews. And if there are, they deserve to die. And so you say to yourself, you know, they went from cancel culture, you know, because they didn't like what you said or they didn't like the way you were conducting yourself, to now literally denying the Holocaust, re, you know, erasing history. And now, you know, they deny your existence and they want to deny your right to exist. And that's why they're tearing down these posters of people and kids who are missing, who are either missing or, or, or you know, are hostages. How can you deny that humanity? They're evil. Because if they're college students, they've got to know how to access this information. And it almost makes you believe that they are in support of destroying the Jews. And then you have to go back and say, well, what have the Jews done to you? Did the Jews get up on October 7th and say, let's destroy Hamas? No. They got up to try to survive in this tough neighborhood, as it's called, uh, of Israel. It's horrific. So is this evil? Seems pretty evil to me. Uh, I would like to believe that they don't understand actually the history of this and what happened and that their social media feeds, and that was a huge theme of the Bill Maher discussion on Friday, that they are being fed a complete counter narrative to the ones that we are fed on ours and the information that we seek out. And they don't have access to good information about this. And we have to do our best to keep bombarding them with that kind of, uh, with that kind of good information. But... You know, I saw AOC was interviewed by Mehdi Hassan over the weekend, and she's calling for a ceasefire, and he kept pushing her. What does that mean? Does that mean Hamas is in charge? She said, well, for a while, ended up with, yeah, for a while, that's how it's got to be. And that is not a viable solution. The Israelis won't settle for that, and they shouldn't. And the U.S. won't settle for that, and they shouldn't. I would encourage everyone to watch. It's a 10-minute video, so it's a bit long, but even just a few minutes of it, there's a a business professor at Columbia, Israeli, who was speaking out the other night, talking about how now he, the university can't protect Jewish students and that parents need to be aware of this, that this has become a completely unsafe environment to be in. Wow. And you see that this could have a real ripple effect on Absolutely, people, yeah. that when you think about where you're going to send your kids, yep. are you going to be looking at one of these universities that has a dean that can't find the guts mm. or even talk to the fundraising director. Look at all of the donations that are being pulled from these universities that said, if you can't find it within yourself to say that my people have a right to exist, you don't get a new library. And I'm ashamed to have gone there. And that is not going to stop anytime soon. It's almost as dangerous as being a conservative on college campus. It's tough. <laughs> Up next, Bidenomics is destroying the American dream. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.